Hello. Here we, we are. are live. Yes. Thank uh, you, Today is Monday, April 4th, 2016, and we are having our Reiki 3 class. Um, part of that class will be, uh, the whole class will be recorded, part of it uh, will be cut out, and some pieces will be published. So, uh, prepare your questions. I might, we might take a few questions. We should take a few questions. It should be a dialogue. Um, so, you know, as an advertisement for the uh, listeners la later, you can find us on humancolony.org, humancolony.org, and there is Reiki, Reiki section there. You just go, and there is all information. How do you sign up? And we plan more Reiki one and two classes soon. Night teaching class, and it usually takes two days. Uh, we usually do it one Monday, and then a week, week later another Monday. So Reiki three class is uh, giving you Reiki master. So first, I have to, I want to define what's Reiki master, and I would start with a little joke. Uh, do you know Reiki? Yes, I know Reiki in a few of few other Japanese words. So basically, in, in Reiki, um, Reiki is so simplified, so simple. So take Reiki Master mm -hmm. as, oh, nice sound. Take Reiki Master as master in uh, in science, right? You, you, you do master in science, you're called master, but then there is a whole lot of study after that. All right. Um, so Reiki Master, you reach that level. I congratulate you with that. You're reaching the Master class. Uh, at that class, you will learn, will teach you as much as we can about Reiki. And uh, as it is galactic Reiki, we go way beyond Reiki. We go to other areas. But after that, the study continues and you have the whole big science to study, the whole big science of healing to research and develop. So that is a big step. You reach certain mountain, you got on the mountain and you see lots of lots of mountains in front of you. So congratulations to getting to that point. And this lesson will be in a, in a big part about using your throat chakra and Uh, for healing. It's about chanting for healing. So until now you used hands and that's a main Reiki tool and in Reiki basically that's where you stop. Galactic Reiki is expanding your uh, teaching beyond beyond traditional Yusui Reiki so I add, we add chanting and many of you already do galactic languages, many of you do it are doing chanting, so I uh, will bless you today for chanting. Will do in, will do initiation into chanting, and that's why I start with a chant. I will help myself with recorded tenpura. It's uh, an Indian instrument. You will recognize it right away, and and then we'll do the blessing and prepare your questions after that.
we thank the spirit, we thank the creator, we th thank the goddess, we thank the all levels of spirit, we thank all levels of angelic realm, we thank our human helpers, we thank our animal, plant kingdom, kingdom of life on earth, kingdom of life in the universe, we thank the planet, we thank the elementals, we thank all the lo lower levels of vibration for creation of this experience. We thank you for the miracle of healing. We are healers. You are healers. I welcome you to the class, to the master class of Reiki healing and to the master class of galactic healing. Thank you for joining. Thank you for uniting. Thank you for opening up to the lesson. Thank you for continuing on the path. Blessed be your path. Hello. I invite a question of two. How was your experience so far? Mass, can you explain how the um, the chanting and the tones um, kind of do their thing? The attention of the tone. Can you explain that a little bit? Thank you. All right. So, as usual, it is a permission slip. Everything is a permission slip. Uh, intention is most important. What you do is a tool which allows you to get attached, get connected to the healing energy in the best way. So, the goal is to heal. The purpose is to heal the patient, to heal someone who needs it. And obviously you use your hands. And obviously your mind stands on the way of connecting to their healing energy. It helps and then it stands on the way. So a perfect healer is going into full meditation and channels the healing energy. So the mind is often, yeah, and did I leave my water boiling or, you know, what do I have to lunch and and all, you know, all other questions come into your mind when you're doing the healing. If you're not, then you're perfect. But if you do, the chanting is one of the ways to connect. That's the first idea. The second idea, the heart chakra. So the hands connect to the heart chakra and the spirit is attached everywhere but the heart chakra is called at the moment an assembly point where the main connection, the main attention of the spirit goes. So you go in from your mind to your heart chakra and do the healing. So Reiki shift, shift is from the mind to the heart and you feel the buzz in the hands, you feel the energy and you send the energy. Now, you may want to shift between heart and the throat chakra and start chanting and that's where your assembly point shifts to the throat chakra. It's a different frequency so it is a tool to connect through the throat chakra. Um, a lot of spiritual practices do that. It's a great tool for meditation and it's a great tool for opening your channeling abilities. So when you channel in a, in Jim's way, when you channel in Jim's way, it, it goes through the throat chakra. The, you open it and allow the spirits to come through the throat chakra so they can do their work not only through your hands as they do, but also through the sound. It's it also very important that the patient hears what you what, what you see and it synchronizes your vibrations and their vibrations. So that's another way to sync. And also it's another way to do proactive things. So if you think that 
what I am doing is not sufficient and often it is not like sometimes the disease can be strong and you want and you do want to invite more help so that could be a tool to invite more help uh, the ear chakra it's something new but basically take it as easy I will explain lots more physics of that later but ear chakra is also playing a role so with a voice you sing but when you sing you hear and it's a, a closed circuit so you see you have the feedback and what you hear is the si similar thing what what the patient hears so so you activate the here the the higher frequency it's a little higher throat lower uh, ear is a little higher so you play heart throat ear right and uh, there is a lot of magic there a lot of magic uh, the main secret of this magic is not to know the words or not to interpret the words not to explain the words let the words come without you analyzing their meaning that opens the path for the spirit to play that's how the spirits do their work through randomnessity for through randomness through choosing the dice how it falls you know when you are in control they you know it's your proactive action when you release the control and let random things happen that's called channeling and that's where spirits take charge so that's basically the invitation for the galactic languages of course chanting known words is great especially repetitive words especially the words you love but you can also chant random things and that's what I I just recently learned so it, I'm, I'm new to that so you basically for me it is the way to open and invite the entrance to the healers to come and do their How do you call it? Their invocations, their there is a nice word. Um, affirmations, that's the word I was looking for. Do their affirmations. So again, it's very important what you intend and who you invite. But then after you invite, they, they do their work. So for me, whenever I find that I chant something understandable something analyzable I just shift to more randomness and as soon as I find randomness I stick to it and then I put my intention not in the words but in the sound and in the intention between sounds something behind the sound something beyond sound so um, I will chant a little. The intention is to, for those of you who do galactic languages and chant, would be to connect to healing energies. And for those who don't chant, to connect to healing energies, to initiate the connection to healing energies too. So that would be the affirmation, the initiation, you into chanting. Mm. So take it easy, take it easy. It is a permission slip. Take it easy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kaida Runaya, Kaida Runaya, Kaida Runaya. Kaida Uaru Anuaya.
Ram. Shukatuha, 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 Shukatuha. Kaida Runa, Kaida Shuruna, Shuruna, Yanuma, I'm just dealing with other healers. I'm friends with other healers. I'm going to other healers. There is lots more which I don't yet understand. I know medical science somewhat, like some part of medical science, not big. And there is acupuncture, which is a whole new universe. And there is yoga, which is a whole new universe. And there is herbal medicine, which is by itself. And there is... Um, that sort of, there is many names to that, but basically interactive healing. So in, in Reiki, it is interaction, silent interaction. It is hands-on. Now we are the singing, but the patient basically is, is silent unless you do the conversation. And I do a lot of conversation, especially in the beginning. So I sort of, first is my big conversation part, then I go say, now you go into meditative Reiki state and we stay silent and then when they come out, we do again the conversation. So I'm lifting them up. So again, it's it's my image of the spring water coming and the rivers come out, small creeks come out. And now, at least in, in my part of Russia, you can boat from one village to another over the fields which are flat. So things become possible when you leave the level of the water, things become possible which are not possible before. When you leave the patient up spiritually, bring them into the Reiki space, the healing becomes possible, understanding becomes possible, which wasn't possible in their normal state. But again, you can't hold them into that space forever. You let them taste it, try it, and release, and be done. Basically, you, you, you're returning back. So you shift and sh shift in, shift out, sh shift up, and then you shift to your space and disconnect. How to deal with unsolvable, unhealable, like huge diseases? That's, that's for me, it's, it's a challenge, of course. You know, sometimes, you know, I can only pray, right? I'm here providing my hands, but, you know, if there's something big or something which I can't which with my Reiki I can't heal. I can only invite their higher wisdom and higher healing. Maybe it's time for the for the patient to go. Maybe, and you know that could be an important reason. If they're due to to next incarnation, for example, maybe it's time for them to leave that body and go into the next body. So spiritually, there is a perfect reason for them to to get to go. But again, if they don't want to go and um, you're a healer, you're trying to do whatever. So you give up and invite, submit, give up, what's that word? Um, surrender and invite the, the spirits to do whatever is best in spiritual interest, I guess. But again, there are healers that do miracles, like John of God and uh, lots of other healers. Just there are miraculous healing so invite that too you always allow for that miracle to happen so that, again when you chant that could be your intention for a miracle to happen and basically your voice counts you are what's that word you are petitioning that's the word petitioning the higher console to give that body another chance to serve here and now, 
to serve in this reality. And your petition might might be the turning point for them. And you also invite the, the patient also to petition for that. Again, you don't want to share your pessimism. You don't want to share your despair. You don't want to pronounce bad things if they're not as bad yet. So even if you feel something, you don't say things to worse. So that's the culture of healers. You know, that's why the doctors have their own secret language, which is well guarded. That is, even medical dictionary doesn't spell it out. They always invent new words for diseases. Like uh, for cancer, what do they use for cancer? All sorts of things. Um, transformation. Um, <laughs> I even forgot. Yeah, there are some words. Um, so, so yeah, so they always use, so when they speak to each other, the patients don't understand their, their language. And that is also helping the patient not to be as scared and be in their space. So when you arrive there and you see that you are doctor, they always ask if you're MD, and, and then if, if you're MD, then they speak to you <laughs> in their language, understanding that you understand what they say. Oh, so big medical science, and that conversation, I, conversation is important, and there is that elevated conversation into the elevated space which is by itself is a huge healing practice where you play your role and they play their role and that can be very healing. Like for example one of the healers in the group where Jim and I were going, uh, she often would ask, do you really want to get rid of that pain? And you say, yes. Are you sure? Say louder. Do you really want to get rid of that pain? Yes, louder, louder. Yes, I do. Good. I just wanted to make sure. Now, cough it out, right? So that's that's one of the typical tricks, 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 permission slips that work. Okay, I will do a little chanting, and the chanting will be some. I channel some symbols. Let me grab the one which. I want to do now. Oh, here we go. Here is a symbol. Can you hear it? Can you see it? So when I chant, you might look at it or you might close your eyes and memorize it. I will share with you the the scans of them later between the between the classes. So this is the symbol of letting go by shaking off, and the numbers for these are three plus two plus three. Basically, that's how the dynamics of the symbol goes. So I will chant, chant, and I will initiate you to that symbol, uh, letting go by shaking off. <laughs> Kalana Satana Kalana Ratana Kalana Ratana Joina Kalana Ratana Joina Comments, questions? Back. What was the point of that? 
Uh, the point of that was letting go by shaking off. Three, two, plus three. Sometimes you let go one way, sometimes just... Ah, it's Is that for you yourself or for a client? It was... Either way. Either way. Use it either way. So, like, letting... I in, yeah, I was... Yes, first I, I understood it as... Um, for yourself, but obviously you can share it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I find the uh, the chanting a great way to bring the whole session to the to the state, especially if you know it's like music, Reiki music. I shared a few a few CDs with the class, so so you know choosing the right music is, is essential. And again, if if things shift out, you just bring them back with your voice with your voice um, one thing is again uh, re responsibility you are in, uh, you brought that up you are responsible you are as a healer you are in charge that's a great principle uh, you always can surrender but if things go wrong you are responsible to do something and that happens often uh, yeah, tapping is also a healing technique. That happens often. So, um, basically, if things go wrong, if you don't feel right or the client starts, you know, becomes possessed with something negative that happens or um, the mood goes wrong or something else, then you're in charge to... Are we good? No, the message frozen. Who is frozen? Am I frozen? Hello? No, I can hear you. Oh, good. Yeah, we're yeah. good. All right. So, so you're, you're responsible to, to fix it. So just starting singing is, is a great way. Clapping, dancing. Uh, again, like it's very similar to what you do when you are a hypnotist. A hypnotist. If the experience has, if, ex if the patient has a bad trip, you are responsible to bring them back. I'll mute Jim if I can. Yep, I'm muted. All right. So, so you're responsible. So, you just put on doctor's hat and say, "Who is? What's wrong here? You know, we are done here. Now we are shifting. All is good. We are shifting back." So. You know, like people are fighting, you're coming and saying, all right, kids, calm down, you go there, you go there, how, you know, you just, you know, take the hat of the authority and, and do that. Like once, uh, I told the story many times, a bad spirit came into gym and I wasn't in the fighting mode, so I said, I will serve you, I want to make you happy, I will play music for you. So I played the music, it was devoted to please the spirit. And... It was evil spirit, but he said, you know, nobody did, did it for me for thousands of years. So I remember something which I forgot. Thank you very much. And he asked Jim to cough him out, and he was out. But another, another time, it was the opposite thing. Some bad guys, some bad um, aliens uh, wanted to find some information in Jim. And Jim like crazy and was jumping on the bed it, you know, it was he was channeling right but but he was like oh it's painful or oh, it's fine ha 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 it was he was completely insane so I just said you know you're not invited please leave you're not permitted to be here it's my intention it's my right to prohibit you being there return me Jim and they did it they did it you just you know, it's you know they listen to you. It's your space you created. You created, and where as you created, you are in charge. So, so that works. You're responsible to take charge and do whatever. Uh, one of teachers I like, I found Manosov. He cites a story from long time ago. You know, one of the oh, how do you translate it? Uh, one of the ancient alchemists. He was also a, a warrior. Um, 
he he did some ritual when uh, a bad spirit appeared. It was visible. It was a wind, black wind, black vortex, and he did you know everybody around was scared, but he just took his sword and started starting screaming and rotating, spinning the sword, and it just worked. You know, you just don't be afraid. You're in charge. You do whatever you can to stop it. So that's that's one of the lessons for Reiki Master. Of course, surrendering is great, but you know, when, when things go wrong, you have to do something. Just change whatever. Change your position. Change the voice. Change the situation. Move things around. Say, and now we go to the next step. Everything is good. That works, too. <sighs> Recently, I had an experience. I, so I have that experience, as Carl said, you know, so the person just gets into the blissful state and the, the, on, on, on the table, you hold the hands and they just channel something. There is something else in their body, right? And that happens very often, especially with women and for me it's especially with the younger women in their searches. For me it's younger. <laughs> <laughs> younger women in their 20s and 30s. Um, all right, so so they get into some special state, and usually I let things go just fine. I allow them to be in that state. I have no clue what is happening, except I'm just getting used to that. You know, that happens, so I'm holding my hands, I'm holding the space, I'm protecting their space. I'm in charge in terms of protection. If something goes wrong, I will do something. I will say something. I will bring them back. And usually if I ask them, you know, are you there? They say, yes, just don't interfere, something like that. So they are there, but there is something else happening. They lift their hands. They sit down. They shake. They have almost, a, you know, it looks like orgasm, but it is not. I was always wondering if it is orgasm or not. It's something else. Um, so things happen. But recently there was an, a case where I'm doing the usual thing and she starts shaking and there is also some kind of weird expression on her face showing a clean on expression, if you know that. Clean on woman angry or a cat angry. Yeah, angry cat expression. Some real, real wild animal been there. So I decided, you know, uh, you know, it's a possessing spirit. I want to get rid of it. So... I don't do anything, it's just my intention. And it gets worse and worse, she becomes angrier and angrier, and she says, stop doing whatever you do. And I say, yeah, yeah, I'm stopping, I'm stopping, but I still hold my hands, and I still want there to get rid of that animal. And it gets, you know, she becomes really uncomfortable. So finally, we st I stopped the music. I didn't realize that. I needed to stop that intention of getting rid of that animal. And later, couple sessions, no, by next session, by the beginning of the next session, I realized she is that animal. I cannot get rid of that animal because that's incarnation of that animal. It's her essence. She is a human, but she has that clean on cat or Liran. I don't know which 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 of the races clean on cat as a basis of your personality. So when she goes into trance and meditation, that's that's your inner nature. So getting rid of her inner nature is harmful for her. So that's what she, what she asked me to stop. A nice lesson, by the way. You know, very unobvious. I was thinking she was possessed while she was your natural self. So go learn. I will do one more sign. Um, so that's another uh, symbol, channel symbol. It's called letting go of a habit. Yep. Letting go of a habit. I Darunayay, 
だろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろないやいだろ
our ancient Atlantean teaching. And I would start from the idea of why do we have seven chakras, right? Why seven? What is that number? Is it unique to humans? Is it same for animals? Is it same for aliens? What's about, what's so magic about seven? And it looks to me, okay, it's based on the idea of Manosov. Manosov is a teacher in Russia, teaching on YouTube in, in, in Russian. But basically he quotes much more ancient traditions. He basically just brings it together in a package which is easy to, is compacted, so for me it was easy to, to get into. So why seven? Right? And the answer is, it is artificial construct. When was it constructed? That's a huge question. Is it either Atlantean, long time ago, about 100,000 years ago, something like that, or it comes before Atlantis from Pleiades and Orion. I think it is more like an Orion idea. To me, it sounds like very Orion type of idea. We have the Aryan race, which nobody knows what it is because it can be Aryans in the uh, Middle East or Aryans in the North or Aryans in India, so it's everywhere. They were spread. There is a trace of it. Um, but basically it's the idea of a human, a human, cosmic human, universal human losing their tail, I think their tails. So Lyrans still have tails. They are the first humans in this universe. They came to our universe from elsewhere. And then they lost the tail and that's I think where the seven comes from. So there is no natural seven in the nature in the, in the, on the earth. Yeah, the moon cycle is Moon month is about 28 days, but it's not exactly. So maybe that seven kind of connects, but I think it's maybe the seven is primary and then the moon was made to do four rotations per moon month. Maybe. But basically then it was a huge experiment which created the modern human. And you can see that experiments still play a huge role. And the seven days of the week is, why do we have seven days? Because it was put there in our culture by the creators of the culture. They say, and here we give you number seven, it will be everywhere in your life. But it is not natural. I mean, six is natural. It's hexagon, you can see it everywhere. Three is natural. Five is rare, but it's there. But seven is, I think it's it's more, it's more like air. Uh, Highlight of the seven is a choice. And that's why we have seven chakras. So there are chakras in between, but because we so focused on those chakras, they become real, they become more pronounced. So that's then that Manosov explained. The chakra is the frequency, and the frequency is the distance from your top or from your brain. It's it's either way. So the shortest distance is say to the seventh chakra, the crown one. The highest frequency. The highest frequency color, the purple, right? Or whatever color it is. Maybe it's beyond purple. It's next next round in the spectrum. Then the next one is third eye, the, pur the real purple. It's very very short vibration, very short wavelength. Then there is, the biggest is the root chakra, which is the red, the, the longest wavelength, the fi highest frequency. And those in between are in between because the nerve impulse goes that quickly or maybe there is something else going, like some spiritual wave, ethereal wave going that distance, but in our space. So when you tune into the heart chakra, you tune into that frequency. If you want to shift to higher, upper heart, 
higher heart chakra. You just have to shift to the frequency and and then you will feel it there. Basically, you can feel a chakra anywhere if you tune to that frequency. That's the point. So ear chakra would be a little below the third eye chakra and a little above the throat chakra, somewhere in between. It exists if you tune into the chakra, you can feel it. Any questions so far? All right. So, and we go next. Next part of the experiment was a division, division in, of the humanity into social castes and I believe it comes from before the Atlantis, I believe it comes from Orion. We still know that there is some division up there in the uh, Pleiades and so on, there are castes. And the caste is artificial obviously and now we are part of even bigger experiment, we break those castes you see their genetic mixing of all races, which is great, which is very progressive. And you see their spiritual mixing of all levels of society. I am, my parents are from different levels of society. One is from higher, one is from lower. Their parents were from different levels of society. So in the last few hundred years, those divisions are mixing together and uh, new things are becoming possible. So when you think about those seven chakras and separations between the functions, these are now being dissolved. So when you learn about the functions, good question, just a second. When you learn about the functions, you uh, remember that they are artificial and being mixed right now. And we were asked about a break, so uh, how long do you want a break? Five minutes? I all right, so 11.25, I will see you soon. Thank you for, for giving me a break, too. Right. Uh, like, sometimes I, when I chant, I invite one idea and, and let it come through me. I understand that it's very imperfect. It's kind of, you know, I'm seeking it. But usually in the beginning, I kind of wave up and down, right and left. And then I find that idea, and it just feels, as, as with Reiki, it feels right. And I stay with it, and I usually chant much longer. Like right now, I'm just giving you the samples, but and it changes from day to day. And well, very often I recognize it's a human music, human words, maybe ancient human words, but it's still not galactic. And sometimes it feels, I invite the angelic, or sometimes it is the idea of, uh, thanking the Creator, so again, starting with the things. So there is lots of different, um, again, you, you define the intention, lots of different options to what to want. So I will give you next symbol, and here is an example. You want to invite the uh, Pleiadian idea, and also specifically idea of Pleiadian healing. I will do the chant, and um, I initiate you in a Pleiadian healing vibration. <coughs> that would be the Pleiades, Pleiadian idea of um, easy going type, easy going Pleiadian healing, easy going, easy. I la I la I I la I I la I I la 
I and I'm doing a high I like I know I like I know I like I know I One thing I learned about uh, when when I when I tell people what I'm doing, if I just tell them exactly what I'm doing, they get <laughs> scared and confused. So basically, keeping the secret is actually good because the outcome when I when you say it's random words, I'm chan channeling random words, they just you know they don't understand. Uh, I mean, some some would of course do, but some some just get spooked away. So so. You know, figure out what you want to say, but you can say something like, which is true, it's galactic, it's ancient, it is secret, but um, it's really, you know, you don't have to pronounce exactly the mechanics, how, how you get there. So basically then, uh, they invented that separation from, uh, separation between the castes, and we still inherit much of it. So the idea was that the soul starts, so it's a spiritual design, it's not only earthly design, it's mostly designed on the spirit level, how they designed the separation for the, for the human society. I think again starting from Orion. So the, 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 earth, the, the soul starts from getting physical experience, so when the baby is born, it's the root chakra is first active, then they start communicating that the second chakra are working there, they start doing something responsible, you know, expressing their will, it's the third chakra. Um, and so on. So they, they develop from bottom up. And same thing they, they designed for castes. The, the lowest caste is physical workers, and for them it's physical work there main function they attached, the assembly point is the chakra. And they can't even communicate well, they can't even speak well. So for them, uh, they go through the lessons, again it's in the past, they go through the lessons and usually for each cast it is 9 or 12 lessons in different teachings, uh, lifetime lessons, and then their highest achievement, their level, is learn to speak, learn how to communicate, learn to communicate. So for them, the magic is communication. That's the magical practice. Spiritual practice is communication. So teaching them, at least in the past again, teaching them Reiki or magical arts or spirituality of different levels would be hard unless you, it was coming through the idea of activating their communication, the throat chakra, talking, singing, explaining, so that would be uplifting them to the next level. Again, in the past. Uh, the next level was, so they also, one, one property of those was that if they died, they, their soul wouldn't incarnate again. Their lifetime experience would be lost. Again, it, it's in that ancient system. So they, that's why they were called untouchables because, you know, if you, if you kill them, you know, they can't incarnate again. Um, next task was traders. So for me, uh, with my um, uh, Star Trek-centered world, it's, it's Ferengi. Ferengi are traders, the, the salespeople, the people who are making deals and breaking deals and all about uh, profit and and talking and usually their level of talking is very much nonsense for, for others but they, they just love talking and everybody's business partners for them 
business partners, business friends. So the whole world is friends. So that's how they do do things in life by making deals and expanding their talking and expanding their friendship. So, so for me, the presentation of that behavior is uh, commercials on the television or whole television together like talk shows when they just talk, talk, and talk without much. Uh, spiritual sense without much meaning just 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 a noise of talking so for those people the highest they go through the lessons highest achievement highest magical practice to go to the next level is is becoming a warrior becoming uh, someone who can force their will on others brute force so they are not the ones who fight. They're not the brave. They're not. They're not comfortable with conflict. They like talking. So, but you know, as they develop their highest magical inspiration, their ascension to the next level, their transcendence is martial arts classes. So people very friendly going into martial arts classes as they would go to church. That's the level. So. Again, teaching spirituality to them would be teaching spirituality of martial arts, teaching spirituality of the fight, teaching spirituality of the will. Next level is the people of power, the warriors, the rulers, the princes, uh, the administrators, peoples of power. That's again, and that corresponds again. The physical is root chakra, the traders communications is the second chakra, the sacral one, and willpower is the third chakra. Willpower, third chakra. That's the old humanity, the humanity of hierarchy, fight, and dominance. So, for each of those three levels, there is a different approach to the problems in life. So the lowest level, the hardest, you know, the the problem if the problem is arising, you know, what would they do? They work harder, do physical stuff. They they work harder. That's what they do. They physically work. For the second level, if the problem arises, they have to talk it out, they have to talk, 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 make deals, talk. For the third level it is just willpower. If there is a wall, you have to break it. Just boom, boom, boom. That's the approach. If they would make the doors, you know, wherever the hole is, wherever the wall is, where they are, they would force their way through. Okay, and then there is a. The rest of the chakras are so-called ma magicians, priests, psychics, um, esoterics. Um, Saints, there would be one more word, alchemists. Yes. So then, uh, the graduation for the for the for the warrior is becoming an alchemist, a healer, a magician, a priest. But because the warriors consider the whole world to be a fight, their magical learning of of higher spirituality is black magic. They would first learn the idea of how to express their power in magical ways and succeed in their fights using magical spells and stuff. So that had, takes place in the old system. It is it is there the dark magic. And then they graduate and they become Again, through incarnations. It could be one incarnation spell level or million incarnations spell level. I don't know. But then they become scientists and priests. And that's where heart chakra and upper chakras are working. It's not now not, not separated. They're all working, four upper four chakras working together. But their beginning of their magic, magician, scientist, priest cast is just getting lots of experience and getting the intuition up so you really can feel whatever area you're in if you're like doing engineering you can 
intuitively solve the problem. If you are a uh, musician, you would intuitively feel stuff. If you are literature, you would intuitively create. So it's developing intuition through lots of experience. Then you become a healer. And again, the healer is using heart chakra for healing with hands, and upper chakra for healing, a throat chakra for healing with voice, a third eye chakra to see things and connect through intention, and higher chakra to connect to the higher, higher um, levels, and lots more. So. So the healers is the next step. So first step of the magician cast or priest cast is just getting your experience and getting your intuition. Next step is to get your healing abilities where you can actually it's change the world. So as Manosov explained, there is seven levels, seven chakras. And the first three chakras are connected inside. That's the octopus where three appendages go inside. So you look inside you. It's it's about you. And then upper chakras connect you to outside. The heart connects you to outside. The throat connects you to outside. The third eye connects you to outside. So basically you learn how to do things outside in a magic way. So the level of healer is the level where you can affect the reality outside by through through the chakras. You can shift something through spiritual ways. That is possible only when your vibrational level is sufficient. And then next level is you go so first it's easier to 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 affect to heal people who are heal conscious objects, people, plants, animals, uh, developing processes which are in flux, which are developing something unstable, some unstable processes. I can give you an example. And anyway, it's, it's unstable systems like um, computer systems, yeah, programs. Affect the programs with the, your willpower spiritual willpower. And then later is, next level of magician is affecting the events with your spiritual energy. So that that is um, that is again the next step. I don't know if you do it in this incarnation or, you know, we learn it now, but it is possible to affect the events and shift your reality in the, in the, and reality of others in certain directions. So you affect the events. And then you, when you raise even higher in your spiritual vibrational energy, then you become a, I forgot the word, someone who, who, who is already on the level of creator, basically create, uh, affect the Design of the of the of the of the matrix. So, design of the matrix. It's 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 more like creator level. So you at some point you basically you can't really stay in your body or your body becomes unnecessary and you become um, more like a, what's a good word ascended being more like ascended being. You can use the body but it's not your place of residence. Oh, so there is. Tons more to teach to talk about this, but the main understanding is like I started, of course, when I learned about this, it all started making sense. I classified all people I know around, I assigned them a number. It's like you remember, we, we went uh, gym channel spiritual numbers you have that frequency, you have that frequency, so fre frequency 3.5 would be between solar plexus and and heart when you. I in the heart is 4.0, where above the heart is 4.2, and something like that. When you like in, in the bliss, you are something. Um, like remember, Jesus was like, I think number was 12 or 13, so way up. One interesting thing, like um, 
from this understanding is the tail gives you connection to lower levels. So Lyrans, reptilians, animals, they're connected to way lower levels. They have all the chakras on the tail, which connect them to lower levels of existence. So maybe that helps them to understand to live happily with time. We kind of we don't have tails, so our ability to feel things is limited. So like here is an example. Uh, the dogs, you know, I go I tell them they ignore me. And I go out and then I remember I forgot something. I grab that. I go, let's go out. They ignore me. I go out. Okay, I forgot the key. All right, I'm coming back. Now I grab the key. And now they go because, you know, that's a perfect time. And they know that now it's really time to go. I didn't know. But they have their tails, so they, they really know when, when it's a proper time to, to come out. So why would they go when, when it's not time, right? So that kind of intuition which allows you to connect to the, you know, Later levels of reality, the basis level of reality is 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 interesting. So, so there are practices where you shift your focus of assembly, focus of attention, point of assembly point to different chakras, and we do it all the time. Like when you eat, it's taste, throat chakra, and stomach, you know, belly chakra. When you see it, it's again when you talk, it's throat chakra. When you child, it's throat chakra. Now, when you uh, do sex, then it's somewhere down there. Bottom two chakras are most involved. Um, when you do physical activities, it's root, root chakra. When you do Reiki, it's a heart chakra. So you, you're in your mind all the time, and then you shh, go down into Reiki, and your mind kind of um, is not as used anymore. So you point up a establish around. There are practices when, um, maybe dark magic practices or shamanic practices, when they're, they lower their point of assembly below the root chakra and go into animal consciousness. It allows them to go down and achieve some healing or else shamanic things by lowering. And again, some drugs might, might bring you, your vibration lower than the root chakra. But that's not what I would recommend to my students. I would, I, I would, lesson of today is going, you know, bring the harmony to third eye, throat, and heart chakras and help healing. That's the purpose of today. I will, uh, give you another symbol and we'll talk a little. So that's a symbol of accept, accepting, acceptance by embrace. Acceptance by embrace. So very harmonious. Very harmonious symbol. Yai no gali Yai no gali Ralu lai Ralu lai no gali I
in preparing questions. One thing I wanted to mention is that I don't know, somehow it's hard for me to express emotions when I think. But when I chant it's it's well, it's easy and I can actually at will bring up one emotion and another. I know tragedy brings you know is is somehow coming up much easier when I chant. I can't I'm taught not to cry, but, but in chanting I can connect to that emotion. And it's very healing for myself and for others. So tragedy and um, and um, uh, grief, I guess, com comes out. And I think it's healing. All right, I invite uh, comments, questions. Max, your, yes. sim your symbols that you showed us so far, mm -hmm. how do how do we use those? I mean, do we use it for intention, like you would print it and look at it and to to help you focus? I'm not sure how I would use that symbol or any of those symbols. Um, or do I? They're, they're very simple to draw, so you can use them as Reiki symbols. You can actually draw them in the air. Oh, I see. Sim simple to draw. They're very simple. You can print them if you like. You can put them anywhere, and they're not secret. So you can put them on a computer. Uh, I set up uh, on on Windows. You can just um, kind of flip flip them so they just go as a background on your on the computer, like uh, not the screensaver, but desktop background changing pictures. So I, I do that as well. I do Reiki symbols and stuff. So it's always in front of my me, like and, and it changes once in a while. Where can you from? Nah. Where did they originate, the symbols? Uh, uh, when I channeled, I had an idea. Now I don't remember. That's all I, you know, okay. it was like two, you, you two months ago. Symbols. Yeah, it's a channel, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. Basically, I meditate. Hold, hold on a thought. I meditate, and I think I did it in a couple mornings. Like, I, I, I come up in the morning, I lay down, I'm still asleep, and they come in my mind, and I sort of work on their perfection in my mind so I kind of you know is it like that or like it's like psh, crystallizes and um, first is the meaning and then there is a symbol so it's you know give me the symbol for that they give me the symbol and who gives I don't know who gives uh, who gives the symbol I don't know and then um, and then I just psh, when I remember that I, I, I have a couple I still have to draw I remember them but they, they're not on paper yet. They seem Pleiadian to me. They seem very Pleiadian. Surprise! <laughs> I have a couple of... Uh, that's reptilian which I want to draw. I, I know it, but I didn't draw it yet. I have a little note, but it didn't make it big. Somebody... Um, I think it was... Uh, Holly, you wanted to say something. No, that was it. I just wondered uh, what specifically uh -huh. to do with it. So you you answer that. You'll pr you'll provide um, connections with that so I can write those down later and. Yes, absolutely. Links to the symbols. Yes. Lovely. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So one thing I should mention is when you get crazy about doing um chanting. Don't forget to stop once in a while. It's a great idea to have silence when you do Reiki. It's nice you like kind of set up the scene, set, set up the vibration, and then work with silence. Silence is magic. Silence is magic. So I just have to. I, I I I started easy. I started easy. I didn't go to the public for a while. I chant for myself. I. Um, it's. I, I gave you, I shared with you Krishna Das's um, workshops. They are making me happy for the last couple of months. I'm just listening. It's lots of hours. So I'm, when I'm driving, I listen a little bit yes. every time I drive. And um, basically, his main message is pick your spiritual practice and do it. And when you do it, you put yourself there. If you get distracted, that's normal. Just come back to it and devote yourself to it. So it doesn't really matter what practice you use, but 
the matters and that you do it and you devote, you focus, you put your intention, focus, and if your mind drifts, come back and do it. So repetition is the key for the chanting. You know, whatever comes out, any random sound, if you repeat it enough times, and if you put their intention to connect to higher levels, that's that's spiritual chanting. And it's wonderful when you don't understand the word, because if it is English song, Russian song, it loses so much. For me, Beatles were magic. Until I now, like 20 years in America, I started understanding the words. <laughs> <laughs> Beatles were magic. And what's interesting, yeah. the songs of Paul are, the words correspond to the melody. It is very harmonious creation. And I'm not that disappointed when I understand the words of the melody because the melody already has that meaning. For John, it's almost always the opposite. Uh, the melody and the words go so separate ways. The melody is his message, and the words are his message, but they are always contradicting each other. Almost always. Not always, but almost always. So now, finally, when I understand the words, it has nothing to do with what was in the melody. I, I knew the melody. I knew the message there. And the words now, they're deep, but they're different. So, so same thing. That's why I love Spanish music. I just don't understand any words, and I love it. And African music, and uh, Hindu music, and Hindu chants. And as Krishna Das says, it's wonderful. You Westerners are blessed that you don't understand what the words say, because if you start understanding what the words say, you would be so confused, and you would be distracted from the spiritual meaning of that. So if you find good chants which you want to memorize, great. Uh, if you want to look at the translations, it's wonderful. And it's a good start. So I start with Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddishan Mitzvotav. So that's a Jewish Hebrew Hebrew main mantra. And there is also one in Russian. But um, it's... Um, and then you, you go beyond if you like. Or you can stay with whatever you... you, you know, for me, the, like different weeks, I have different start points. So I have entrance. As Sarah said, thank you. The intention matters. You connect to the idea, and then you you work with it. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Okay, the idea of promoting Reiki. Mm, I keep initiating everyone into Reiki if I feel comfortable. So Reiki one, you have to go to the class, but I find it helpful. Not for everybody, but for many people, I give them a tool, a Reiki initiation, it will be Reiki Zero. It's not part of Usui Reiki, but I think it's it's a great service if, if, if you, and I, I initiate you too, to allow others to do Reiki Zero. Basically, uh, the process can be different. For me, it is... When I do Reiki on people, I take their hand, draw a Chukurei symbol on the hand, draw a Chukurei symbol on their heart, and uh, on each hand. So, And I do a chant, and I explain to them that now they will have an opportunity to use their energy to heal themselves and show the, the positions of the hand. So it's a very min miniaturized five-minute Reiki introductory lesson. Again, only for people for whom I think that, who already I think developed sufficiently to, to get it. Some people are already there and they need little push. And then I explain that you have to take Reiki classes and so on. And um, there is a little philosophy about uh, good intention, pure intention, which I, which I always mention, that you have to have a pure intention and then you will be protected. You have to be in a positive state of mind and not to bring anything negative. And you use it only for positive purposes and if you do it on others you respect their their their, their will. So these are main principles. And then you know the leave to leave the rest to the Reiki spirits. So 
you know, main three, four principles I, I mentioned. So I, I see no harm if you do that. Uh, basically, I think if, if Reiki spreads, you know, lo lots of people are already ready for that. And um, I welcome the initiation in Reiki Zero, and then they can take classes and expand their knowledge. <clears throat> Uh, wonderful. So I don't have any symbol for at the moment for that initiation, but I will use Arcturian, Arcturian healing symbols, which would um, be a wonderful entrance for that. So that would be. I will ch chant a little bit. I will show you Arcturian invitation for Arcturian healing, and that would be initiation for you to go and give Reiki to those people who you believe are ready to get a little bit Reiki Zero initiation. All right. I Chida, 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 hai. Chida, 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 hai, chida. Chida, chida, And I just looked at the clock. I took much time. Jim, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I was, I was looking at. I was thinking that I still have time, but apparently, I took extra 40 minutes of your time. Oh, that's okay because we started late. We started 20 minutes late, and I took 40 extra. So, uh, to to the on the top of those 20. So I, it's extra hour. No, you didn't take 40. It's only 10 after two. Whatever math you like, you okay. create your reality. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. So, Jim, I bless Perfect your report, continued, yeah. <laughs> continued. Okay. Uh, next time, please give give me some hints about the time. I I didn't know. Oh, okay, uh, not All a right. problem. I knew we started late, so I was giving you some extra time. All right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I bless your um, health. Thank you for coming back fresh and new and vibrant and sound. Thank you. Thank you, Max. All right. See you around. Let's have a little break before we start symbols. Thank you, Max. Uh, uh, we'll take a five or ten minute break and then come back and we'll start fresh with symbols because that's what I'm teaching today. We're gonna go. We're gonna review. We're gonna do the present and we'll do the future symbols and I will give you the meanings and all of them and where they came from, et cetera, et cetera. And how to use them. Very good. Okay, so take ten then, Jim. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ten is all right. Okay. It's ten after now, so do come back at twenty after. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, I'll. I'm going to be doing the symbols today, the past, the present, and the future. Um, whenever uh, you teach Reiki 3, the master's class, I want to make sure that people also, even though some of the things that happen in Reiki 3 supersede the things that happen in Reiki 1 and 2, you're, it's still important to know the symbols from the Reiki 2. Um, 
Michelle, they did they go over those at your Reiki class? We did all five symbols yep. again. Yeah. Actually, yep. well, we learned how to do attunements and stuff too. So. Right. So, exactly. so Chokurei, uh, Seheki, Hanshan Seishonen, Daikomio, um, and Holy Fire is what we ended well, up with ultimately. There's actually two more Reiki symbols that they didn't teach you. One is for the Reiki teaching class, but okay. I will give you all of them because the, the one symbol, even though it's a Reiki teaching class symbol, it also has practical uses for treating patients. So Excellent. I will go into that, okay? Cool, yeah. So right now, uh, does everybody know their symbols from Reiki 2? The uh, Choku Rei, the Seiheiki, and the Honcho Zeishonen. I, I will show yes. them. Yep, I've got them memorized. Yep. Um, here they are on this sheet, and I will. Um, it it gives you a pretty good idea what they look like, and there. If you have a Reiki book, also they will be in there. Is it in the material that he sent out? I was not able to open that up. My computer was not working at that time, and so I did not. Open yeah, the material it's in the online. It's in the hmm? books. It's in the books. Yes. Okay. Who knows what Choku Rei means? That's the master symbol, yeah? No. no. That's Riki on. It means... I'm going to let somebody else answer. <laughs> Place the energy here. It's like yeah, and then put the energy there. Yeah, there's that, and then there's the master Choku Rei one, which is the big one. Oh. Well, that's a different thing. Yep. Okay. Hold on. Is it like this choku ray? This is the Asui choku ray, which means put the energy here or put the energy everywhere. It could also mean everywhere. Now, if you're working on somebody's uh, particular person, you can put the choku ray in a specific spot on their body, or you could put it on their entire body, or you can actually fill the room with Reiki if you think that there is a need for that. What would be a reason why you would put Reiki into the whole room? To Protection. clear the room. Pardon me, I didn't hear you. Uh, I said protection. That's one way. What if there's a lot of people talking and there's a lot of confusion or there just is something missing from this, you know, the room. It feels cold, it feels empty. I put the energy in the entire room to give it a more open feel, to to make the energy flow a little better. So the Choku Ray for put the energy here for the entire room would be for safety. That is a good point. But for also for cleansing the room out a little bit, putting that positive Reiki energy in the place of the whole room. But mostly I use it for if if somebody were, were on the table and they said, my back is really hurting or my head is hurting or my shoulders, I would put that directly into them, that place the, place the energy here so that it can open up that area so that it can start healing. Any questions about that one? Um, do you subscribe that it's necessary to do each wall, ceiling, floor, or is one in the oh. video? Um, whenever you're doing the attunements, you have okay. to put the rig, the choku ray in all the walls, yes, okay. and the ceiling and everything. Now, if you're just doing a Reiki treatment, you right. can put it in the walls if you'd like to, okay. but if you put it in the room, that's sufficient enough. Now, when you're doing an attunement, when you're doing a teaching, uh, after yeah. a teaching right. attunement, you do put the Reiki symbol in the walls. Yes. Okay. Sorry. But that's uh, in the Reiki, Reiki teaching class. You do put that symbol in the walls before you do any attunements on anybody. 
when you're doing Reiki 3 te Master Teacher. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what you just took, right? Yeah, but then I took the just Master before that. And right. she just does it. She does it, but that doesn't mean okay. everybody does it. I'm it's, just asking. Well, it's, it, it doesn't it's a nice thing to do. You can do it. I'm sure that I'm sure you can do it without doing a teaching class, but it um, you have to do it for uh, the teacher's class because before any attunement, the room must be prepared and the choku ray must be put in the walls, floors, and ceilings in that room that you're doing your attunements. Gotcha. Okay? Alrighty then. The next symbol is Seheiki. Does everybody know what that one stands for? That one's the mental health one. Right. Anybody else? It can be even more than that. Emotional balance. Emotional balance. That's good. Very good. Yes. This is the symbol that it goes for uh, balancing the emotions or balancing ment mental illnesses or mental problems like people's thought processes are jammed up, people aren't thinking properly, people are feeling emotionally drained, uh, heartbreak, all kinds of things that deal with the emotions and the mental state of people. So say Heiki can, if somebody comes in and you are aware that they're going through some emotional problems, you don't have to tell them that you're doing the say Heiki on them. But it is a very nice gesture for you to do so. You might tell them, I'm going to do a symbol on you that will help maybe some of your uh, thought processes uh, for today, make them a little brighter. And the reason you do say Heiki is for right away, if, if somebody comes in and they're distraught mentally, if they're going through something really difficult, you want to make them more relaxed and comfortable before you have your session. So a lot of times the Seheiki will be used before you even start to work on them. As soon as they get on the table, the first thing you do is go around their entire body and check them out. The second thing I would do is the Seheiki that would help them get their themselves balanced emotionally and mentally and because when they're not in the right place emotionally and mentally of course their physical is going to be off somewhat too it, you don't it doesn't have to be a great emotional problem for you to just go ahead and use the, all the, the uh, symbols there is not a problem with that I'm just telling you their practical uses, that's all. You can use them all, all the time. And you know what? It is fabulous to do that because, you know, you have all your bases covered. Yeah. I'm just letting you know for what reasons specifically they could be used. Any other questions? Okay, let's move on. This is the, the symbol she was talking about, distance, healing. Uh, of course, it has a couple other meanings as well. Um, it's the Han Shao Zhe Shonen. It's the hard one. Has anybody learned to use it? I mean, use it while they're working. Yes. Yes. The Han Shao Zhe Shonen. The Han Shazé Shonen, as you see it over here, let me block out the rest of them. Hold on. I can't see what I'm doing here. Oh, let me do it this way. Ta da! <laughs> it's actually easier to do it this way because you can see it much better. I had had it separated out. It's, um,. It's been explained in several different ways to me, but the Han Shao Zhe Shonen can be used for uh, distance healing. Now that can be distance in time, distance in space, distance across the room or across the world. But this is the symbol that can be used for distance healing. 
and she was saying about distance in time. You can send this symbol into the future if you want to, yeah, if there is a need for it. Will told me, I forgot, he, I, I knew it was for distance. He goes, well, you can go forward and backward in time with it. I was like, what? So, yeah. Yes, you can. Also, this is a symbol for, um, the, the way they explain it is, may the Buddha or God in me connect to the Buddha or God in you to promote harmony and peace. Now, for healing, that's a wonderful thing. Um, it can be used to bring peace to the uh, situation. Perhaps they are not quite peaceful with all the things that are going on, and, you, it, and this might be their first Reiki or whatever, or they may be somebody you just love very much, and you want to do the Han Shonen just to connect to them in a very loving and peaceful way so that they will um, feel that closeness and that, that comfort of you as you're sending your energy into them. Is there any question about this symbol? Now, has everybody learned to draw it? The other two symbols are a little easier. I mean, you might have a little bit of trouble with the uh, Saheki because it is a little weird. It looks like a little bit like a, a, a dragon, don't you think? Definitely. <laughs> so, yeah. and it's, and um, see the bumps on the back there? A lot mm -hmm. of people, when they draw this symbol, have a tendency to make those bumps very small, but they are not small bumps. Your dragon has big bumps. <laughs> I totally right, got called out on that. <laughs> yeah. Your, you have big bumps on your dragon, okay? Okay. Make sure that that is the one big error people make. They make those bumps a little too small. And if you want to do it correctly, you make your bumps bigger. So, as, as my teacher said... No, it has big boobs. You have to put big boobs on it. So, that is one way to say it. <laughs> All right. The Han Shaze Shonen, this shows exactly how to draw it on here. Do you see that? Yeah. I've got this one. This is the drawing that Miss, Mrs. Tamaka did when she she was like first generation Reiki person that was taught by uh, the original master so this is how she drew it and she was Japanese so she would know the symbols pretty well but make sure you're drawing it at least close to correctly I'm sure that they'll forgive I mean the the spirits forgive you if you're not exactly right on but to, hey Jim yes for me when I learned it I just wanted to share this if anybody is ha has a hard time um, and I broke it down and you know how it's like numbered 1 through 22 I just broke it down yes. to like 1 2 3 4 and then 1 2 like whatever however many were in the first and then so I would remember there's two swipes on this one, and then there's this, you know, this many swipes. That helped me. I don't know if that'll help anyone else. Oh yes, it's once you get, once you start drawing it in the. You see, I draw it in my head, or I draw it in the air, or I draw it over the body. Um, but you, you sort of have to in get a picture of it in your head of of how to draw it because it is important to get it at least fairly accurate. Now I know that there are some people that have a real difficult time remembering that one, that symbol, and the dichomio which is coming up. Can you put it up uh, again please? Yes. Oh, I have it upside down. It's that way. Can you see the whole thing? It's hard for me to look at that and also hold it up.
Yeah, so like the first one has five things. So you see, I go across, I go down, I go, I start at the left, I go no right, and then I do across, and then I went stop. Now I do one, two, and then I went stop. Now, now I do you're one, also two, three. seeing it backwards, in a sense. Are you, are you? Do you understand that? Are you seeing it? We're backwards? not seeing it backwards. Okay, great. I'm seeing it backwards, reflecting at okay. me. No, we're not seeing it backwards. Excellent. I'm glad you're not seeing it backwards, because that would be wrong. <laughs> well, it would be backwards. <laughs> it would be wrong, though. You'd be doing, you'd be going, Han Chauze show you, and then backwards. I'm sorry, did you still need to see it a little bit longer? If you want to write in the lines, I'm sure it's in your book and in your whatever uh, things that they're working with you about. Uh, whatever uh, Max sent you probably has all the symbols in it as well. But I had computer problems last week, and I just got my computer back, so I wasn't able to open anything that Guru Dan sent me. <laughs> Sorry, Guru Dan. But I was trying to open it, and I was going, I need to call someone. So I did, and now my computer's wonderful, but I just used the book for all my information. I didn't know what he was going to go over today. I knew what I was going to do. I knew what I was going to do. Oh, wow. I am wow. almost I'm getting an echo now. Carl, you need to run me up, please. Was that enough? I think so. Sarah, was that enough? Yes, I was just trying to get the numbers down on my paper. Oh, did you get them? Yeah, I got the numbers. Okay, excellent. Um, the next thing I'm going to go over is something that we already went over with as well. It's a galactic Reiki symbol. I wanted to, I want to pay it. I want to point out something. Did you notice that in uh, Max's drawings of the his symbols that there was a lot of circles and spirals? Spirals are universal. It seems like there's a, some algorithm, something about the spiral that is very healing. It causes a vortex of healing. And so here is, remember this one? This is the uh, deep healing Choku Ray. It's 12 spirals. Now, I had this made because to draw it would be just cuckoo. Um, but when you're doing it yourself, you can just go around and around. You don't have to have that uh, that degree of separation in all of your um, spirals. Just do the 12 circles and finish on the 12. But what it is, is that's a deep healing Choku Ray. Of course, it's a major spiral. And this is from Lirin, uh, Octorian, Yuyil. They all use this. Syrian. Uh, they all have a version of this in their Reiki files. Uh, if you'll notice, it does have the top on, just like the Choku Ray. Don't know what that symbolizes, but it does have the top on, and it and it does go through. Now, let me show you something. See the Choku Ray? How it just has the three circles, correct? However, an interesting thing about the three circles is it represents the seven chakras. See where the, the circle intersects the line? Count how many times it intersects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Representation of all the chakras. Isn't that interesting? And uh, and you can intend it to help with the the brightening of chakras too, because the chakra ray put the energy here is intended for the energy field 
and that's what the chakras are, your energy fields. So you can also intend that as you're doing the Joku Ray, you can brighten the chakras. Now we have other symbols for that, but the Choku Ray has just put the energy here or put the energy everywhere, put the energy in the room, in the walls. It's it's a it's a draw it's a bringing of the energy to this place this situation. Any questions about that? No, Jim. What's the does the last time they just called the twelve the deep tissue? Yes, it, it's a deep healing. Okay, deep, deep healing. healing. Deep healing, deep tissue. This goes down to the bone and including the bone. So it's deep tissue or deep healing. Whatever you want to name it, it's deep into the body. It's not it's not like just your surface backache or shoulder ache or right. you know, muscle pain. This goes down to the bone, down to the deeper tissues, down to the organs. Yeah. This is a deeper healing symbol. And the reason why it has the 12 is to dig deeper and put more energy there. Create a vortex, if you will, that goes deeper. Right. Everybody got that one? Jim? Yes. During my uh, level 2 attunement, Taker mentioned a 6 uh, spiral chokure, the yes. long lasting chokure. Yes, to, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about that too. Hold on. There is one called Long Lasting. I have no picture of it because it looks like a regular choker ray with six spirals. However, let me let me go through that. When you do a choker ray, how many times do you do this do it? Three. three. You do it three times. So when you do a long-lasting choker ray, which was my next one, it's also a spiral uh, beginning. It's a choker ray, a choker ray, and then the third choker ray has six spirals instead of three. I don't have a picture of that because I didn't have time to make it on the computer. But Did you call that one again? That's the long-lasting We didn't choker learn ray. that. Um, no, this is something from the Galactic Reiki. I don't remember learning that one. No, this is new. Okay. Um, but it was shown to some people in private sessions, so they know about it. Okay. Thanks. Long-lasting choker ray means that if there is something that giving somebody chronic pain, chronic pain being something that's happening all the time, it's not just one time or it's just not one shoulder pain, but it's a repetitive pain that keeps going and going like every week they come back, they're saying my back hurts in the same place. After you do Reiki, it feels better for like three days, but then the pain comes back. Then you can let them know that you're going to do a long-lasting choku ray on it, which should last till they come again if they're a weekly customer, or or last at least seven to ten days. So that's what the long-lasting choku ray does. It takes chronic pain and gives it a longer period of relief. I have a question Any about. Questions? Yes. I have a question about telling them the length of time something may or may not work. <laughs> um, well, is that to empower them, or is that? Um, um, I is don't it, know. I I think it's just nice to tell them. It might help with their belief system a little right, bit. Right. Um, but basically, you're just telling them what you're doing, and usually a good practitioner, if you know, okay. lets people know what's going on and uh, what things they're doing. You don't tell them every symbol that you use or anything like that. But for some things, you you can say, I'm going to try to give you a longer lasting pain relief since right. you've been coming here and you've been getting all this have right. chronic pain. I'm going to do a long lasting choku ray. 
It's and, also a good idea, I think, because it puts in their subconscious, too. Yeah, so... Um, I never thought about it. Yeah, so their relief, it actually works, because I've had, I've used it already a couple of times with people with chronic back pain. That's the one thing that it, it seems to work best on, is chronic back pain. They, they come every, you know, I have a weekly... I have uh, five weekly customers of six, and um, if they have chronic pain, I use this and let them know, and they usually say, yeah, that lasted a, a few days longer, and it, when they come back, it's just now starting to re return, like in a week, so. I have a question. Do yes. All the do all the symbols have a time period? No. Actually, it goes on. It does go on your belief system pretty much, and on your intention, and on who's helping you with the healing. Whenever you announce your intention at the beginning of the your Reiki uh, session and say, um, "I'm going to be working on the shoulders, the back, the legs," blah blah blah. That actually calls on your spirit guides to let them know what needs to be done, who, to, who they should call in to help you with that treatment, and sometimes other spirits come. Not always, but if you let others know and they're available, they can definitely come and help. I know that that sounds a little uh, presumptuous, but it's true. A lot of spirits will come to help, especially relatives and things of that nature of the person, will come and help their family feel better. And if they get a better treatment if you announce what it is you're going to work on because other spirits will come and help. And also, uh, the angels and everyone else hear what you're doing as well. And if they're available, it is not unusual for some angel or a guardian angel to come and help with your Reiki treatment. This is something they really believe in. They believe in the energy healing. They feel the energy all around them. They know about energy, so they do come and help. So, they sort of feel sorry for us in the third dimension. <laughs> <laughs> they should. Um, <laughs> Jim, so I thought, or it was... It, this is my idea that Reiki knows where to go and what to do. It does. So if it so knows where to go of, and what to do, then is it necessary to say those things out loud too? And but the saying, thing is, Reiki knows where to go and what to do, but your your uh, client doesn't know that. Uh huh. And also. If you, it knows where to go and what to do, but what in what strength? What strength are you putting it on there? This is to add extra strength, to okay. announce it so others can come and help. Of course it knows where to go and what to do, but you're just one person and they're just, you know, if it's just you and your client's energy, eh, it might not do as much as if you announce it and have other people come or have other spirits come. I guess I always invite, like, my realm before a, a session, so it hadn't occurred to me. Yeah, so... I mean, um, like, I, like, I don't, I, I wouldn't I, say it out loud to invite... The more help, the better, though. Okay, gotcha. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not that the Reiki's not going to go in the right place. It's just that you got to help, and they, they're going to help you take the energy where it needs to go, so... And especially if you have those in the spirit world or angelic that knows how to help with certain kinds of pain. Right. Now, that may sound a little strange, but there are some that are better at helping at certain kinds of pain than others. Cool. They had it in their life, so they want to help with this life with somebody else. So it is good to mention what part, nice. you know, needs work. Okay. So that they can come and do their thing. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Anybody else? 
Um, yeah, I have uh, one comment I wanted to bring up. Uh, when we were looking at the Han Shaze Shonen symbol, I looked in the book that we got, and yep. on, I, I believe it was the, on the show part of it, um, yep. in the book, it shows to go the horizontal piece and then the vertical piece, and I believe it's 13 and 14, and the way that you had it there, Jim, it was, I think it was 14 and 15, but it was the vertical and then the horizontal piece. You mean this one? You mean this one? Yeah, so there you have 50, or 14 and 15, and in the book, it go, the 15 is 13, and the 14 is... Yes, oh. they do have yeah, a little, 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 little bit different, but this, little bit this, is the one, one, this is the one that was... That was drawn by Mrs. Tickle. Okay, well, Who I've been using the, both ways, the and it's worked. Neither one of them. Worked worked one of them I'll, I'll yeah. tell you what, this I'll, is the I'll tell you what, this older is the drawing. drawing. Okay, perfect. So it might so have it might updated, have updated, but there's nothing wrong there's with using wrong with the newer one or the newer one. The newer one. Yeah, okay. But this is but this is this is the Well, I'm getting a lot well, of echo. I'm getting a lot of echo. Um, what was that? I was Say saying intention is really the biggest factor. Oh yeah, there's there's, yeah, there's many ways to draw symbols because there's so many different kinds of reiki, but. It's the intention. Right, exactly. Your intention for drawing the symbols and in your mind as correct as possible. And I thank you for wanting to be correct. I, I really appreciate that. And I do I do the uh, Han Chaozai Shonen as Mrs. Takashi did it. So because that's the way I was taught by my teacher. She uh, she took it and she she learned from William Rand, who wrote the book. So, um, and he used Mrs. Takashi's version also. And but in his book, he has it differently. So I don't get it. So, but she did learn uh, her Reiki from William Rand. So at Stonehenge. So it should be really, really. She's a really powerful Reiki healer, so it's fantastic. Any other questions about that? And thank you for being wanting to be correct. I appreciate that a lot because it, it is important to be as correct as possible. But as you say, Michelle, the intention is even greater because they can correct your symbols as if you're not exactly right. Any other questions? All right. Um, All right. I have one question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, one one quick question. Um, so, what do you think about the idea? I haven't done this yet, but I've been thinking about doing it. Um, to thank my spirit guides or people that help with Reiki, even when I'm not doing Reiki. Like, let's say, for example, I like to go out, um, at night and go dancing, and I'm really good at at dancing actually. And sometimes people form a circle and I dance in the middle, and it's a big deal. And, like, before I'm about to go step on stage or whatever, I could be like, hey, guys, you know, this is for you. You know, thanks for kind of, like, you know, like, bringing them into the moment. I mean, I'm assuming they'd probably appreciate that. What do you think about that? Absolutely. My, my whole life is about uh, giving thanks. Every day, all the time, before a session, after a session... Before this Reiki class, after this Reiki class, I am always saying thank you to my spirit guides, to God. I'm thanking him for my prosperity, my love, my joy, my wisdom. Whatever it is that I'm receiving from the, the universe, I'm always giving thanks. And it does not hurt, believe me. Uh, anytime you want to give thanks to your spirit guides or anyone, 
it's always wonderful because you will be rewarded for that. It is not that your spirit guides need to hear you say, oh, thank you. They're not in it for the ego, but put it this way. If you say thank you, if someone said thank you to you all the time and for the, all the things that you did and appreciated you so much, and then you had another person that you did a lot for, but they didn't say anything, who would you be more willing to help? Who would you want to be hanging around with? Who would you want to give your energy to? Of course, you'd want to give it to the person that's appreciative, that's loving it, that is happy about it. So look at it that way. They're not looking for your praise and thanksgiving, but it certainly helps them be motivated to help you, give you of their energy, and be loving and kind to you. It's just beautiful. I find that they're around all the time because you're just appreciating all the stuff that they're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really good perspective. Thank you. Yeah, I, think, I just see yeah, them going. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was told in a channeling session by Archangel Michael, you guys call us in and then you never talk to us. Like, we're, we're just come in and do the work, and then you don't even... So I said, that's cool, I'll start chatting with you. So, like, having a dialogue, like, I, I have a continual dialogue, like, every day with my higher self, with my guides, with different angels, you know, Excellent. just try to familiarize myself with their energy and feel like you have a rapport. I mean, and plus I want to grow into my higher self too, so if I'm not talking to and paying attention to it, then that makes it that more di much more difficult. Excellent. I think that's so beautiful that um, you just appreciate what they're doing for you and talk to them and make them friends because they are there for you all the time. And I know some people say there no one ever helps me from there, but they do believe me. And if you start telling them thank you and I appreciate you and thank you for this and that and the other thing, you're going to start recognizing who's actually there helping you. And there's quite a few. Alrighty then. Are you ready for the next part? That was the old stuff. Any questions on the old stuff? I have one, Jim. Yes. Um, for your like level zero choker ray attunement, you know yes. that that beginning one. Can do you have to do the three spiral one, or could you use a six or even a twelve? Choker um, ray. It depends on your intention. Now, if you're just putting the energy in the room or in the person or in a place, I'd use the regular one. If there is chronic pain that happens a lot, I would use the long-lasting one, which is the six on the third. On the third choku ray, I'd use the six. And then, if you, if they're having really deep pain, like to the bone or to the in the in the organs or in that part of the body, I'd use the the twelve which is the deep tissue or deep healing choku ray. Well, kind of what you I was... You can use them all whenever you want, though. Was the, the Reiki Zero Initiation is more what I was referring to? Yes. That choku ray, you know, that you draw on the palms and the heart, over the heart chakra, do you use... Yes. Can you use the different ones can, depending on the person sure. you're working on? Not okay, treatment. just make sure. Yes. So I could use either. Just make sure or your intention. Well, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, because I'm going to be helping uh, at some point here. I work with hospice, and my director oh, yeah. would like me to do something just like you described to get them just a simple initiation so they can use it on their patients they're working on to get them started. So Yes, Choku Ray is perfect. 
but I can use the six or twelve depending on the person. Like I Correct. have a gal living with me who she is an angel as well as me, uh, Seraphim actually, and she has some really deep seated issues, mental issues, and I not only want to help her break through those and just blossom, but I my thought came to me if I use I want to in, do that for her that initiation okay and Very I good. Think remember you remember this too though you're attuned to, to these uh, symbols she you can give other people the symbols but they're not attuned to them so they're not as powerful when you get attuned to the symbols it adds another dimension of energy to them now you're attuned to up to the level two, so your energy for those symbols are all great. So you can help her with those. Also, remember if you're working on another angel, I've worked with angels on Earth here, and they and a lot of them have mental problems. Let me tell you why. It's a major disconnect from their realm to this realm. Oh, you understand makes, that? It makes sense. It's a huge, huge difference, and they cannot get used to it. This density is very difficult on for angels. Few of them, like yourself, you seem to be pretty well balanced, but I know some angels are just like, they're so clairvoyant, they're so open to just like they were in their last realm, and they there has too much stimulation on the brain and they and they feel a very big disconnect from third dimension and it's it's a very rough time and they have to get that under control they have to understand why they feel that way before they can actually get control of it okay well i'm working with her so <laughs> it's uh I, I just um, wondered if, if the 12 would be more effective on her being she's if just... She had, I think the Seheiki would help to start with, but there's another symbol here I'll get to that would also really help her. Okay, then. Now I'll uh, just be quiet. Well, actually, there's a couple symbols here that we haven't done yet that will really help her. Okay. Sounds wonderful. I can't wait okay. to help her. Poor baby's just miserable. She's, and I know that she's miserable because angels in this realm tend to not be in phase with their dimension. Now, in even in some cases, I know one that goes out of phase, which means you can see right through her. Wow. That's how much out of phase she goes. Wow. And you have to keep her in third dimension it's not good because she gets tortured by other dimensional beings and it's a, it's really bad but she, you can it's not that you can see through her that much but you can see that she is not totally solid it's weird but wow. you can actually see it okay so. thank you for the insight no problem <laughs> alright does anybody need a break before I start part two Oh, I have a question um, on the topic. Yes. Um, is there a special symbol for the ignition of the different Reiki points, like Reiki 1, 2, and 3? Is there a special symbol you do when igniting someone else? Yeah, but we can't do that until we take the teacher Yeah, class. you have to wait to You have to do a master teacher. teacher. Yeah, you have to be a teacher to ignite somebody else because you have there's a certain way you have to do that. There's a proper way and a non-proper way, I guess you could say, because you want to ignite them in a way that they'll be beneficial and that they'll feel good and that they'll go out and be uh, prosperous and that all things will be well. You cannot just haphazardly ignite somebody. That's really kind of dangerous. So what happens is, okay, maybe they might be attuned for this symbol, but not for that one or whatever. You know what I mean? You have to be all inclusive. You have to know how to do it because it has to be put into the brain, the hands, the body, the <coughs> spirit. It's, it's, um, 
being a teacher and an attuner is something that's very special and not everybody should or or even wants to know how to do it because you have to be very careful with you with that I'm an Asui Reiki master and a Asui Reiki fire uh, holy fire master as well and teacher for both of those so I have two holy fire I have two Reiki master degrees but they're different in some ways but they it, you have to be very careful what you do thank you you're welcome so is it, uh, this, yes. this is Holly again so I'm not supposed to do that Reiki Zero initiation. You're not supposed to do an initiation, but you can do the Reiki on her. You okay. are a practitioner already, but you can do Reiki on her that will help her. The Han Shaze Shonen okay. uh, will help her when you unite your spirits. I thought uh, I would be able to just do that little part. That yeah, to say bit. Heiki will be good for her mental condition. Okay. The Choku okay. Ray would be good for bringing energies, but and I have more symbols for you because you're okay. you're in your late Reiki three now, and these are now the <laughs> symbols that are be coming up now are very powerful. Okay. And okay. after your attunement will be very very helpful. Thank these you. are the more powerful symbols, the <laughs> symbols that are all inclusive of even all the Reiki symbols that you're already learned. However, even though they are all inclusive, it's nice to use the separate symbols every now and then to do what you need to do for people to make it more okay. uh, um, uh, complete. Correct. Okay. But okay. the next two symbols are both dichomio. Did you learn, Michelle, the uh, Tibetan Daikomio. Um, I learned Asui's out of Asui's okay. Holy now Fire. This, this is the yeah, Asui. that's the one I learned. But I know yeah. there, yeah, I know there's a another one or All a right. couple. There's actually a couple other ones. There's one actually. This, the, yeah. Okay. Um. Um. This is Daikomio. Is it in your books? Yes. Now, Daikomio. It's not the same, though. Yes. It's what does does anybody know what Daikomio means, or what it represents? It's the master symbol. It is the master symbol. What does it really represent? The great bright the great, light. The great bright, bright, the great bright, 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 bright. Exactly. This That's is this is like the the symbol for calling on God, basically the bright light, the beginning of time, the 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 all the energy from the beginning. Uh, it has many different meanings, but they all come from light. Light is always part of the meaning. Light is always part of the uh, definition. So you're calling on a great brightness, a light, a fulfill fulfillingness. So it's really beautiful. Now this, does everybody need, to, does you need to see this a little longer? Because it has the swipe marks on how to draw it. Jim, in the manual, it's a slightly different symbol. With the the, the bottom part is uh, is different. Uh, yeah, which one is best, or can they be? Uh... This is the one from Mrs. Takata. Mm -hmm. So the one in the book is slightly different from William Rand. I would go. My personal belief is the ones that were written by Mrs. Takata would be a little closer to the actual what it was. These are the old drawings. I was fortunate enough to get them. And she actually died. This is a copy of actually how she diagrammed it and numbered it and everything. All my drawings here, other than the ones I do myself, are Mrs. Takata's drawings from 
a different. I mean, I have the Reiki three books and the the Holy Fire books, but these are the ones I use because I believe them to be a little stronger in the sense that they're a little more from the beginning, the original feel of the Reiki, the original energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Excellent. Anybody need this for any longer? Okay. Now, dichomio, whenever, I mean, I do dichomio every day, at least the Asui one. I do, I'll, I'll show you the Dep Tibetan one in a minute. The dichomio is something I do in my meditations. It's a Reiki symbol. But it is calling on the light, calling on the beginning, calling on the great energies of the war, of of the universe. And when I talk to God, I think of the dichomio sometimes. I just go, ah, oh, dichomio, and I'll do it in my head. Great, wonderful, powerful, sparkling, glittering dichomio, eternal dichomio. It's it's a very religious spirit. Well, not religious, but spiritual symbol. So I use it every day. And I would, I would say that most people should try to work it into their lives every day. It brings you such energy. Don't take it for granted, but it brings you really a lot of nice energy. It comes. It's fabulous for your Reiki sessions, for your patients. The, uh, the dichomio covers all the bases, Seheiki, Hancho Seishonen, all of them, Chokurei. But I like to say, I, I just look at it as the light, and the, and it, the light covers everything. So, but if you have specifics, I use Chokurei, Seheiki, and Hancho Seishonen also, even though some people say, oh, you don't need those anymore. You know what? I I personally feel that they're very helpful and they work for me, so that I use them. Does anybody have a question about that? I have a comment about that. Yes. I guess comment slash question. Um. So when I learned the dichomio, yes, I was told. Well, we learned to do the grid thing. I don't know if you did the grid thing or if oh, you do. It's here. Yeah, I have but it. So we, she said that if we did it first, it would enhance the other ones. It would make them even stronger. Yes. So to start out yes. our yes. sessions always with dichomio, and then it can, it'll increase the strength of the other symbols. Absolutely. I have, n I have no problem with that thought process at all. Because it's true. It is the light, the wholeness, the universe, everything. And so when you use that, of course, the other symbols will become en enhanced. I have no doubt about that. And I do use all the symbols. I even use the Tibetan dichomio, which I will show you now. Uh, there's two symbols on this page. There's the Tibetan dichomio, and it's spelled a little differently. Instead of M-Y-O, it's spelled M-I-O at the end of Mio. And the bottom one is the, uh, the uh, Reiki uh, Tibetan fire serpent symbol, which is usually only taught in the uh, teaching class, but I'll tell you why I'm showing it to you now. There is the di Tibetan dichomio. Do you know the difference between the dichomios? Anybody? The Tibetan. I, Some I, believe. Okay. No, I was going to say tell us. Okay. I was going to say that the the Tibetan one represents the Kundalini. It, it in some ways, yes. It's more attached to um, <coughs> to the chakras, but this is what they they the theory is that the Tibetan dichomio is gentler in its healing resource and that it is more powerful 
in its actions, meaning that it does the healing in a stronger but more gentle way. But it still has the same meanings, still has some of the same uh, drawing on the light and thing. Notice the spiral at the bottom. It seems like spirals are part of a lot of Reiki uh, symbols, M many, many things. But it is gentler but more powerful than the Yasui Daikomio. And it's drawn like this. This doesn't have, it doesn't have the directions, yes. It starts at the bottom. For drawing the, this Daikomio, you start at the bottom with that little curlicue there thing. Where Where is my finger? Ah, oh, there it is. It starts down here, and you go around and up. And actually, there should be a little bit more of a, a little bit of a, a curve at the top here. Just a touch, I think. It's, and then it comes from there up here. And then it goes across the top and the seven squigglies. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? That's how you draw the Tibetan dichomio. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Listen. Can you trace that with your finger from beginning to end again? All right. I'm trying to because it's backwards. It is? Okay. For so me, that. it is. So it, it it starts here with the curly cue, and you go right. around and come up here. Uh huh. Then you start down here again. You retrace it. Come, yep, and oh. no, come up okay, there. Just make it okay. And then, if you can see that there's a little curve on the top of this cap. Yeah. Just and then the tiniest like a... bit. Just the little tiniest bit. This cap is a little yeah. curve. Then it does the seven squid. How many? Line. Seven. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think. One, two, well, let's three, count seven. them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay. So, so this is the Tibetan dichomio. Mm -hmm. And the, like I said, it's spelled slightly differently. If you see down there at the bottom, it says M I O instead yeah. of M Y O. So what did you say it was more it was more gentle It was gentler in its execution but more powerful in its outcome execution. That is what it said So I use them both I do you know what of all the symbols this one is the hardest for me to draw in my head uh -huh. I don't know why maybe because it it just I can't relate it to anything it looks like a vase a little bit. It looks like a beard with a loose hair at the end. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to draw. I cut that hair off the end there. It's just loose, you know, and then he's drooling or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I just can't relate it to anything. And it's hard for me to draw all the, the curve. I, I, it's just hard for me. But it is a powerful symbol. It does work, and I use it all the time. I use both of them. I said, if one dichomio doesn't work, the other one will. So I have all my bases covered. You could think of it as an elf shoe. <laughs> yeah, it does sort of look like an elf shoe, doesn't it, if you put it like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, and the bottom one is the Tibetan fire serpent symbol. Notice another spiral. It starts, as you draw this one, it starts at the top. The curved hat is the first thing you draw, that little curved hat at the top. And then you come down and go one, two, three, four, five. And then on the fifth one, it spirals. One, two, three. It's three spirals. Now, this is used in teaching class, but it's also used in practice. What it does is you put the, the hat 
in in the uh, head area and have the the this curve go down the chakras until the base chakra is the spy does the spiral and it uh, and it uh, tunes in and uh, balances all your chakras. Now in t in the teaching class, it's you do it on the their back. It's a the symbol that goes down the middle of their back for the uh, because you're putting it into them to ignite different things so um, it is used in the teaching class uh, attunement it's part of the attunement for the teaching class for a suey yes for a suey yes yeah so you you learned that right exactly did no because this? we did holy fire a suey holy fire so oh, they've right. taken, the they've taken that out. out of it. They've taken out. Yeah, they the take this out. They've taken it out of a, is, a bunch of stuff. This is, this is a good symbol to use to uh, put the chakras back into balance if they're really out. I could use that on myself on a daily basis. So <laughs> this is. How many circles? A circums it goes. It's one, three circles. Two, it's three, three, four, three. five, yeah. and then one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody got that? Yes, thank you. Alrighty. That's that's like a magic cat. I like that. Yeah. Um any questions on those symbols there? We're getting around three thirty uh, here. Jim, I, I wanted to ask you real quick, is do you also subscribe to the idea that using dichomio like the first one we learned is gra immediately grounding and clearing also yes it has many you know it has many different a attributes it's it's a pretty thorough symbol it's grounding it's uh, enlightening it makes you feel better it makes them feel better it's uh, just has it's just the light and all the things that the light does it's kind of like uh, if I wanted to ground instead of me imagining a white light coming all through all my chakras and doing all that I could literally just draw a dichomio yeah sure okay. okay are we ready for the next part um, I'm just gonna show you this symbol it's really not part of this class but um, the holy fire Reiki symbol looks like that, and you need an uh, you need an attunement for it, so you really can't use it. But I wanted you to be aware if you saw anything like that. Actually, it looks my drawing is pathetic compared to what it really looks like. That's what it really looks like. Now, um. I know you've just been through the Holy Fire, Reiki attunement, and all that stuff. Did they describe what it looks like when you... It's, like, incredible. <laughs> it is. Well, I think it's different for everybody, but... Yes, it's, um, it's, it's a it bright, amazing. centered... Amazing. The flame in the middle is bright and awesome, but... All the the uh, flames around it, the begin the base of the flame is bright, but the, all the flames are changing colors constantly. It's really quite nice. So, I just wanted to show you that. Throw that out there. It needs its own attunement, so you really can't use it at this time. But I, I wanted to make you aware of that because when the holy fire is ignited, it's very powerful. And it 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 trumps a lot of the other symbols as well. So, is there any questions yet right now? Will you do uh, holy fire trainings? Right. Will you do uh, holy fire trainings in the future? Yes. In the future? Yes. I will. I can do some. I do have a teaching certificate for that as well. 
for Holy Fire Asui Reiki. Asui Holy Fire Reiki. And I have one for just regular Asui Reiki Master Teacher. So, All right, here's something new that we're going to learn, and then I'll go into the grid. The grid is the last thing because nobody's going to have to draw the grid or do anything like that. It's not a symbol that we're going to have to draw, but I, I just wanted to explain what it is. And you're, you can help me with this, Michelle, because this is one of my weaker points on this, this the, the uh, Reiki grid. But before we do that, any more questions? Yeah, Jim, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, I can just do the dichomio at any point. Do I, I don't have to choke a it at all? No. Okay. Um, you can use dichomio... At any time, all any time during the day, it doesn't have to be a Reiki session. In fact, some people I know that my teacher Barbara Carlton, the lady that taught me the uh, uh, the teaching, and says that she uses the dichomio all the time. If she sees somebody that looks sick, she'll put the dichomio on them. If they're she's driving the car and it's raining really strongly. She'll do a dichomio to keep her safe. Um, she uses the dichomio at least seven or eight times a day for okay. different things. And so that's, I think that's really cool. I may not use it quite that much, but I use it at least three times a day. Okay. But I don't use it on, like, driving. and th I don't drive anymore. I shouldn't use that as an example. I don't use it as... Uh, a, a protection or anything like that. I, uh, but I do use it for bringing energy to situations, and I always do dichomio before I do a, a channeling session. I don't know why it came to me, and I've been using it ever since. If I channel at all, I use dichomio, and that's a Reiki symbol. But it also it's a beautiful is a energy. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy, and I use it every day, every day. Okay, excellent. No Thank you. No question. Oh, no, no problem. Very good. Um, now, uh, do you need a break or something, or can we keep going? I'm fine. No, I'm we can anybody keep need going. a break? Anybody need a break? And okay. anybody, ever, anybody ever have a pee or Because uh, the next thing I'm going to do is teach you something. Teach away. All right. The next thing I the next thing I'm going to teach you was given to me during a Reiki session with one of my regular clients. And Takur was there, and she is always there with this particular client. And actually, I channel Takur to this client while I'm working with her. Um, and this is a weekly thing. I do it every week. It's, a, it's been going on for a long time. But this last week, just this last week, uh, Takur was telling me what symbols I should teach this week and what I should do next week because there's different. There's a couple other symbols that are coming next week, but I knew I didn't have time to go into them properly this week because we're going to do some other stuff. But next week there's going to be a couple more galactic symbols that Takur has taught me. But this week she wanted me to teach you a breathing method. Now. It's an interesting breathing method because it's it, it came from Syrian and Octorian. The Syrians and Octorians, this is the, the farthest back it goes is Syrian and Octorian. Other species also use it. However, it's a breathing technique called Hegesen, or in Syrian, it's Hengesin. I'll, I'll show it to you. These are the spellings. The top one is uh, Octorian. The bottom one is Syrian. Ch 
she gave me a little history about it, how it came into existence, and why it's still used, and it's spread throughout the galaxy and pretty much many other galaxies at this point, because it's been around several thousands of years. And let me explain what it is. Did everybody get that? Yes. Hegesen or Hengasin, always hyphenated. It's exactly the same. The actual breathing technique is exactly the same. It's just the spelling that's different in those two different cultures. Now, uh, some species use the one and some species use the other, but those are the two different variations of the spelling. And that's all she knows of as the variation, but they're exactly the same breathing technique. And the reason for this breathing technique is you can only use it once during a Reiki session, whereas you can use Choku Rei for bring the energy here, bring the energy there. You can use it like three times during a, say, bring a Reiki session and say Heiki or whatever. You can use it many different times. Do, do you find that to be true when you're doing your Reiki sessions that you use some of the symbols more than once? And it's, it's all right. You can do that. But with this symbol, it only works one time. You can't use it more than once in a Reiki session. Now that's, but it is a breathe, it's not a symbol, it's a breathing uh, um, a technique. And it's for sudden, severe pain. Like if somebody's on the pay table, and all of a sudden, they have a pain. And they go, ah! This is the use for this Hegesen. And it's, um, it does have words that go with it, that, uh, they, she taught me what it symbolizes, but I will show you what it is first. It, it's, it's very new to me, so bear with me. It's breathing in through the nose. Stop. Breathe out through the nose tw for two seconds. Two seconds, and then blow out through the mouth for two seconds, and then at the end. You do that three times. It's... That is how it's done. And it's for severe, sudden pain. And that will bring what it does. She explained it to me. It is, it brings in the pain. So it's, the first breathing in is called acceptance. And then the blowing out is called release. And the blowing out, I mean, the two first two seconds of the nose is uh, blowing out or release. The blowing out of the mouth is acceptance or clearing. And the last tick is finish. It's done. So you do that three times, though. It's acceptance, what did I say, release, clearing, done. Acceptance, release, clearing, done. Did you get that? That's what it represents. But it's for severe, sudden pain. If somebody is in, you're doing a, a treatment on somebody and they have severe, sudden pain, then that's what you do. Any questions? I'll do it again. Just to give you an example, what it is. The Hega Sen is this.
but you can only do that once. It won't work if you try to do a second three. She said it only works on the first three. And if you try to do it on the second three, you will get no results. So I found that to be a very interesting one. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, my buttons are open. Any questions with that? Can I see the spelling again? Oh. The Octorian is on the top. Hold on, I can't get it. Oh. The Syrian is on the bottom. Oh, wrong That's one. Holy fire, yeah. What happened to it? Oh, there it is. Now, this is really new information for me. It just came this last Wednesday, so it's not even a week old yet. Who's on the bottom? I forgot. Uh, the Syrians. Syrian. Okay, thanks. The top is the Arcturians. The bottom is the Syrians. Can you raise it? I'm super excited about this, Jim. You like that? I think it's cool. It's great. Very awesome. good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's for, did you get what it was for? Sudden extreme pain. Somebody just like, ah! There are situations and times when I have experienced people having sudden extreme pain while they're doing their Reiki session. All of a sudden, something will happen and they will like, ah! And so that's what the Hegesen is for, or the Hengesin. Any other questions? Okay, now we'll go to the Reiki grid. Now, let me read a little bit about this Reiki grid. You've seen the picture of it, correct? This is a grid. It's not really, you, you actually like get, uh, there are places where you can go buy this symbol. You go purchase it at a store and then set up your grid. Because this symbol has to be underneath the crystals or whatever the stones that you use. This is the base for the, the grid. No other, I mean, you have to have it. Let me read about this for, to you. I'm real, this is really hard for me because my eyes are bad. But this is a Reiki grid arranged on an Antakarana symbol. That is the Antakarana symbol. Note that the six crystals are uh, pointing toward the center. The six crystals. Do you see the crystals on there? They're pointing toward the center. And they have a specific place. It shows you on here where you're supposed to put those crystals. The master crystal is off to the side. An amethyst pyramid. Oh, you know what? It didn't all print out. Is in the center. However, you could use uh, a single pointed crystal a double terminated uh, crystal or a cluster of crystal ball. The arrows indicate the direction uh, to point move the blank crystal. It didn't all print out. Doggone it. It's hard to read. But I'm sure it's in your notes that uh, that Max gave you, but this is supposed to be a very helpful, making the, the your Reiki crystal grid will just help increase the energy and give, 
you know, will do a lot of stuff for your household, probably. It'll Reiki your entire household and give you more energy when you're doing your Reiki and things of that nature. Read about it, if you would. I'm not going to read it because it's over here on this side. If you can see, it did not really print. So I can't really read it. <laughs> that takes care of that. <laughs> Is there I, any I don't questions? Think that was a, that was a, I don't think that huh? was on the manual. It wasn't? I no, I don't think so. It's I not in the okay. manual that was provided by Max. It's probably in other manuals. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. It's a Reiki grid that you can put up in your household. Um, when you go to a stone shop or a metaphysical store, they'll have this. Uh, they'll have this. They sell these bases. Some of them are made of wood. Some of them are made of uh, porcelain, paper, all kinds of things. Uh, but you can, it is called, they'll know, Antikarana. It's an Antikarana. That's how you pronounce it. You spell that A-N-T-A-H-K-A-R-A-N-A. -A -A -A. It's an Antikarana symbol. If you want to write that down. Does anybody need me to spell that again? Jim? Yes. Do you have a smartphone? Yes. So perhaps you can just take a picture of the page and send it to the participants. All right. That's a good idea. I will all let you have a... You have a copy already, don't you, Michelle? No, because I did Holy Fire, and it's a completely different grid. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, that's the Asui grid. Yeah. And, also, and there's a different grid for the Holy Fire. Oh, that's right. You're right. There is. It's the peace grid. It's the world peace grid. Plus, I wanted okay. to um, remind you or double check with you about whether or not we were told in class that um, we use dicomio and we use a technique called ki ko kiho, which means to breathe into. So yes. K O K I H O. Okay. And so you do. You breathe in dicomio, the symbol dicomio, 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 into each crystal to clear them. And that's that very, yes, you can read about it. It does say that in there, yes. Okay. I just, I was going to read the whole thing, but it didn't print out. Yeah. So I, I go, well, that takes care of that. I'll be here st st staggering. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> staggering. You can send a picture. It'll be perfect. Yes, so I'll just send the picture and then um, Google it and you can read all about it. And yes, there are breathing, there are things you can do to the crystals to empower them and make the grid more powerful. Yes. Is, um, is there any questions at this point? Any comments? Any comments? Any experience? Yeah. Any experience? Any experience? I got a question. Uh, what type of crystals are you supposed to put on that uh, anti Karana symbol? Um, there's, it does give you the names of all the crystals. You can use uh, regular crystals, amethyst, and I'm sure there's other ones that they, uh, since amethyst is the third eye crystal, uh, that's probably one reason why that's on there. Clear crystals, hold on. Uh, mass, there's a master crystal off to the side, and you can use a cluster of crystal ball or double uh, terminated crystal or a single pointed crystal for the main crystal. But there's other there's other crystals that go into the grid, but I can't read it because it's not all there. So sorry about that. I thought I was prepared, but then I didn't realize that it didn't print all the way. So it's okay. So. Thank you. Um, alrighty. I think that's about the end of the of the uh, different symbols that I have. But I do want to uh, 
give you some indications of how to use some of the other symbols that we talked about already. Uh, I use them in, you know, they are Reiki symbols, and I do use them in my Reiki practice, but I also use them in my daily life with Choku Ray and things of that nature. As you could, as you heard before, you can put them in the walls, you can put them in the floors and the ceilings, and, you know, you can put them, if you're attuned to these symbols, they can be used, you know, without even people being doing a section. You can use them out in public. Now, some people say, oh, no, you can't because they don't accept them. They have to be able to accept them before you can use them on people. Well, that's true, but your subconscious can accept things and you don't even know about it. So if these people need some help, if people need help out in the world, you can just send these symbols to them, especially the Seheiki or the Choku Rei. I have seen situations out in public where people are like fall down and hurt their leg and you go over and I go over and I I ask them if they're needing any help. Immediately I start doing Reiki on them. And you know what? A lot of times they'll say, you know, you you put your hand on my knee, it feels a lot better, you know. And and uh, thanks for asking and they get up and walk away. You've done Reiki on them. Their subconscious has accepted it. Because why? They want healing. They don't want to feel the pain. The subconscious knows what you're doing. So it's not always true that you have to go up and say, oh, may I do Reiki on you? I mean, it's nice if you're in a room full of metaphysical people and all is well. But you know what? I just do Reiki whenever I think that it's necessary. And if, it, if they don't accept it, they don't accept it. Their body rejects it or whatever, which is very, very rare. But there has been times when it has been rejected. But for the most part, if you're out in public and somebody needs help, you can send Han Chau Zai Shou Nen. It doesn't have to be a long distance. It could be 10 feet, and you're sending long distance healing to their leg, hands, arms, feet, whatever it is that is hurting. When I went to New York City, somebody was laying on the ground. There was a lot of people around them. And my friend that I was with said, we're not going over there. And I'm going, all right, but I'm going to send some Reiki. So I sent some Reiki to the person that was laying on the ground. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know what? Within a few minutes, they were up and about. So any questions about that? Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, crap. Um, hold on. Hold on. Yes. Okay. okay. Your higher Your self higher will reject it if that's what its what is, plan, is. plan is. It'll yes. do it for you okay. anyway. So. Oh, yeah. No question. Does anybody have any other questions about that? You can use your Reiki in other situations other than just patient, doctor, patient, relationships. The world needs Reiki. The world needs healing. Send out the Seiheiki. Send it out. Uh, send out Han Chau Zai Shonen. I do it all the time. Guru Dan does it I, in his own special way. He doesn't need Han Chau Zai Shonen, by the way, but he does send out Reiki all the time and healing energy. And he has lists of people that he sends it out to. And they receive it because, how do I know? Somebody, I'll tell somebody that he's sending it out, and they'll go, oh, yeah, I felt the, something the other day. And you know what? I forgot a symbol. It's right behind me. Can you see it? Yes. That's the Tinch Che. We don't have time to do the Tinch Che right yeah, now. I can do it next week. Huh? Oh, so it has four different activation points. Okay. 
So I don't think I can do that unless unless you can, you have time to go over past four o'clock. I have all the I time. Don't, <laughs> I I don't have much time left because tonight's my bowling night. <laughs> okay, we're on your schedule. Let's talk about next week, Jim. Let's just settle it up for next week because you're on a time schedule as well. I know you're. Yes, but the Tins Che has its own attunement, and you see, it looks a little like the Choku Ray. But it doesn't have the hat. It doesn't have the the big the thing that goes up and down. It can be drawn many different ways and for different reasons. So we'll go into that uh, next week because it's very interesting and very powerful. And it's used for grounding, bringing energy in down. To through your body, it's all used for taking energy up through your body and moving into the fourth dimension. If you're already grounded, if you put it on its side, it's used for atmospheric balancing. That's one of the use, one of the uses for it. Atmospheric balancing. If and I can explain that more next week. And if you move it on the other side. It even has even more meanings. So we'll get into that next week. And thank you for listening carefully. I am very happy to be teaching you, and I hope you learned something today. Thank you, Jim. Can we do some kind of closing oh, thing to close the space? I mean, we opened the space and made a holy space. Can we? Yeah. Yes. Does anybody want to volunteer to do a final blessing? Can't, don't worry. We Come, can't. Well, it's really weak, but I think if you're going to tone or something or uh, speak, I could, along with you, you might be a little louder then, sir. Yeah, you need to be a little louder. Turn yourself up. Yeah, I'm all the way up. I have no idea what's going on right now. Okay, that sounds better, but get close to the mic. Okay. Yatia nukoi asi kalana ka kutu leti sukunai aya sukola i sulutun nitia kana kana kia sa sutun nukutu shaya sukutulunu sakia sa katan nitia sa kutu shan naya kaya. Energy is a gift from God, and energy is a gift to the body. Energy is a gift to all things around you. Use it wisely, use it well, and use it often. Find your ways to heal the world with what energies that you have within your mind, body, and soul. God loves it when you share all the things that are truly given to you to share. And this is one of those things. Let it be known that all the things that are within you are to be shared with the world. Be well and be blessed. Namaste. 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 That's wonderful. Thank Good you, everybody. Thank I'm you, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and stop the broadcast here. All righty. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next week, same time, same bat channel. Have fun, boys. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Jim.